Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's Gary with Xkind RC. Back to talk about the uh, OG Gen 7 that I got uh, late last year when they first came out. Um, the one that a lot of y'all are probably here um, or found us from. So, um, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look and see where it's at. So right now it is sitting bodyless. The body that used to be on it is the Newbright Raptor. That one is going to be um, staying on the IFS rig. So needed to get a new body for this one and decided since I had to shorten the wheelbase on this one to 12 inches, um, I could obviously undo that, but I decided to go ahead and go with the Proline 66 Bronco body. I haven't decided yet what paint scheme I'm going to go with, if I want to do, you know, shiny new or if I want to try my luck at some weathering or patina. Uh, I haven't done that before, so I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to make up my mind there, but this is the body that's going on it. Um, I've got it trimmed up 99%. I'll probably give it one more once over to make sure I'm happy with everything, but it's been cut and trimmed. And I went with the Proline... Uh, blazer, I, I can't remember the exact part number, but it's it's meant for the blazer body, and it, it said blazer and bronco, but obviously not for the 66 bronco. It's not a perfect fit. Um, the It had some cross members here, which I cut out, that went from here to here, which essentially when this is mounted oops, where it should be, would be right basically at head level for any driver um, that would potentially you know be in there. So I went ahead and cut those out, and I'm I'm gonna mount them right here um, in the door, just as a single cross, you know, cross member here as uh, you know, just a, a door. So I'll cut some holes in here, probably shoe goo those in. Um, I'm gonna have to tuck this in a little bit here, which I mean it should be easy. The body's flexible, um, but for the most part, that's I mean that's what it's gonna be looking like. So it should be relatively scaled. The the original Broncos did have a lot shorter here. But got a spare tire mount back there if I want to use it. That would have to be trimmed up. But uh, for the most part, it should be a pretty easy install there. So I'm going to knock that out you know, once I get the body going as well. I'm not sure how detailed I'll get on the interior. Um, it's not going to be a shelf queen, but I want it to look good. So as far as other modifications, um, no, I don't drive around with ESC like that. It's taken apart moderately for fitting the body on there. Um, I went ahead and switched over to the Hobbywing uh, Quick Run Brushless, Sensor, sensor Brushless. The ESC that I got, uh, I found out, is not waterproof at all. Um, I figured them not saying waterproof meant, you know, yeah, you could get it wet a little bit, but no, I mean, it got wet, and within five minutes it was acting up, and the next day it was dead. So um, I went ahead and picked up the Quick Run 10 BL120. So it's powering a 17.5 turn censored brushless. And to keep torque twist down a little and give me a little bit better throttle control, it seems like, um, I went with a pretty small pinion in the factory spur there. So um, I've been happy with that combo there. It's, it's by no means fast, um, but it, it gives me great low end control, and I've got some decent wheel speed you know, if I actually need it to, to get out of some spots. So right now as far as suspension goes it is still rocking the oem gen 7 pro shocks with factory fluid and all i did was swap it out for the scx 10 springs um, i definitely want to thin the fluid up a little bit it, it's got pretty slow rebound um, it's not bad by any means but I, I definitely like a little bit a little bit quicker rebound on those i think um, for crawling in this one so um the wheels are still the same ones that I had on it before, the uh, Vanquish XD, the blues. So whatever color scheme I do on here is going to match this, uh, match these wheels. Um, still rocking the factory servo. As slow and weak as it is, I'm relatively impressed with it. I've beat it up, I've submerged it, I've, you know, I've not taken it easy on it, and it's still rocking. It's outlasted the TSX 45s. Um, almost every TSX 45 that I've had. So kudos to Red Cat for, you know, picking an at, at least reliable, um, if not slow and weak, RTR servo. Comes in handy. The underbody closeouts here are the ones that are available on um, Thingiverse. I did heat them and mold them a little to fit the Raptor body. 
but these are the ones that I went ahead, uh, I took the file that Red Cat released and just added some cross braces to it there and some extra material up there where it actually mounts to the body and they've been holding up really good. Um, I haven't had any problems and I, you know, I don't baby my rigs, you know. Um, so those are going to have to be trimmed when I put the Bronco body on. These are going to have to be trimmed. Um, it's definitely a narrow body. So I uh, did this before the chassis mount servo. Um, y'all probably, I don't know if, if y'all remember in one of the uh, previous videos on the Gen 7, I did the chassis mount servo. This one is a little bit different. This is another red cap file that I went ahead and downloaded from Thingiverse and then optimized. Um, their design, as good as it is, their designers are great. It didn't allow full compression of the suspension. So I need to get better lighting in here but this design does. Now granted, I do have the boom fat axles in here, so the truss is a different size, different shape, but having this back part cut out hasn't impacted reliability, and it does allow more compression than the uh, Red Cat chassis mount servo design. So um, the fat axles with the metal bits in them Stand up here, get a little better, better lighting. Um, with the factory CVs is what I'm running there. So didn't have any problems, you know, mixing and matching the uh, SCX-10 parts and the red cap stuff for the most part. Um, you know, obviously it wasn't stock, but either I think the ring gear in here is red cat and the pinion is SCX-10. Um, I basically just had a pile of parts from stuff that I ordered and got them working. So I don't know exactly what's in there, but uh, front and back boom fat axles it the, the rig stays planted it's not light i mean it's definitely a heavy rig now um even without the battery you know it, it it's a heavy rig well you know actually i've got fish scale here let's see just how heavy it is uh units let's get pounds lb so right now, the Red Cat is sitting at six and a half pounds without a body unloaded. No battery, no body. Six point five pounds. So she's not a she's not a light girl, but she gets the job done. Um, like you know, I haven't had many problems. I haven't had many spots where I haven't been able to go with this rig that my honcho has. Um, the honcho can definitely go some spots that the Gen 7 can't. Um, they're about equally modded. I think the honcho just has better weight distribution um, is the main thing. You know, When I had the Raptor body on there, the weight distribution definitely wasn't ideal with it. Um, spare tire in the back, the body was heavy, sat up pretty high. So the honcho has a pretty light body. A couple of times I've taken the body and off and actually run it like this um, with the electronics mounted, obviously, properly and everything. And it definitely made it a completely different animal than crawling with that body on there. So that was part of the reason for deciding to go with as light of a body as possible. So I, I'm thinking I should keep be able to keep the rig right at seven pounds um, with that body on there. So, so yeah, all in all, Gen 7... Um, New electronics, steel gears in the transmission, small pinion, 12-inch wheelbase. By utilizing the innermost screw holes, and I did back them with a nut on the inside, because there's not much plastic there. So I drilled out the plastic, put a nut on the inside, and pulled these in. That did also require me, now that I'm thinking about it, to trim either the front or the rear drive shaft. I think it was the rear drive shaft I had to trim a little bit. It was too long to allow full compression after I shortened the wheelbase. So, so there it is. The update on the original Gen 7 Pro that we did the review on, and that kind of got me into Red Cats. Uh, I've never had a Red Cat before, and this one, for all intents and purposes, has done nothing but impress me. Um, I, I don't have any major complaints, especially considering the entry price for it. You know, with all the similar upgrades, it's keeping up pretty good with the Honcho. It would definitely keep up with the XJ that I had set up. So 
you know, all in. I got this one brand new. I paid less than I paid for the XJ used. So, so I'm digging the Gen 7 Pro. Um, you know, with the expectations I went into it with, with the mods that I've done, it's really a pretty capable rig. And I, I only see it getting better from this point. Uh, put the lighter body on. And I'll probably, like I said, tweak the suspension a little bit more, shock fluid. Uh, I've definitely got some more changes coming up for it. Not done with it yet. And uh, I'm still digging the Gen 7 Pro. So appreciate y'all watching. Uh, as always, Instagram, Facebook, uh, like and subscribe. And uh, we really do appreciate y'all uh, taking the time to watch and get, leaving the comments and uh, letting us know how we can get better. Um, we always want to make the channel better. You know, we enjoy all this stuff, but uh, only if other people enjoy it as well. So, um, y'all have a good one. Take it easy.